Well, as I told you earlier in the week, Marjorie Taylor Greene's attention-seeking effort to oust Speaker of the House Mike Johnson seems to be charging forward, and she announced that next week she'll be calling this motion to vacate to a vote, which means a vote would uh, potentially oust Mike Johnson, but that's not going to happen. We already have the indication because of Democrats indicating that they're going to step in and save Mike Johnson's job, which seems strange given who Mike Johnson is and what Democrats stand for. But in this case, it seems like the effort to prevent chaos and not let the most extreme part of the party, Marjorie Green, get a win on the part of Democrats. So very interesting moment. And she recently was called out by a Fox News op-ed in a pretty brutal fashion. She responded in uh, an interview with Steve Bannon, wasn't happy about it, as you might be able to imagine. And so we're going to go over that. I'll first go through this op-ed, then I'll show you this interview moment with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Then we'll get to some other updates on MAGA world. So this is from Liz Peake, who's contributing on the Fox News website and writes uh, this. Here's the title. Marjorie Taylor Greene is an idiot. <laughs> That's okay. She's trying to wreck the GOP. Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene needs to be clear about what's really at stake in 2024. But see, here's the deal. Marjorie Taylor Greene's not concerned with what's at stake in 2024 for her uh, party, I should say. She's just concerned with what's at stake for her party as an individual. And for her, her district is so red that she could do almost anything, as we've seen, and she'll be able to win re-election, and that's the only thing she cares about, and she would rather be a big MAGA celebrity who has always been more extreme than the establishment, and that uh, can be the detriment of the party. Here is a little bit more from this. It's high time someone in the Republican Party told Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene to turn all that bombastic, self-serving showmanship and drama queen energy, which as I've previously noted when reading this on the bonus show, don't love that terminology, but we'll continue, on Democrat and stop trying to defeat her own party. To Georgia, or the Georgia Republican who famously displayed sexually explicit photos of Hunter Biden during a committee hearing and called fellow Representative Lauren Boebert a bitch on the House floor, is known for wild antics and equally harebrained conspiracy theories. Now, I'll read more from this, and like I said, I'll get to that interview moment, but... <laughs> She made an allegation there, right? And if you're not familiar with MTG, you might think, what? You can't just baselessly say that MTG is into conspiracy theories. And for the sake of that audience member who's been living in a cave, let me update you and go through a list we've gone through recently of what this author might be referring to. Marjorie Green, and this is just a list of some of the crazy things that she's either believed or said. She was an early subscriber to QAnon. She believed in the Clinton kill list believed a 2017 Las Vegas mass shooting was a government orchestrated plan to strip away Second Amendment rights. She has said a bunch of bigoted things we don't have time for, endorsed the idea in Facebook comments of Obama and Clinton being hanged. She believed in the phrasal drip conspiracy theory, or at least liked a comment that was pushing it, which is an idea of Hillary Clinton torturing a young girl on her skin, taking it off and the whole thing. Uh, endorsed the idea that the Parkland shooting was a false flag operation and the Sandy Hook shooting. Obviously, everyone's aware about the Jewish space lasers saga. She subscribed to Pizzagate, which is a conspiracy theory about in a pizza shop, this human trafficking and pedophile ring being run that led to a shooting at that pizzeria. And obviously, it was completely baseless. 9-11 conspiracy theory she's pushed, and now she's on the Homeland Security Committee, which is wonderful. Obama birtherism. Uh, while she was a congresswoman, she pushed the idea that mask mandates are comparable to the Holocaust, or she compared those two. She liked a comment that said a bullet to the head would be quicker, referring to Nancy Pelosi. She has said that the punishment for treason is death, and Nancy Pelosi is guilty of treason, right next to each other. She harassed a mass shooting survivor, David Hogg, for advocating for gun laws. And also, while she was a congresswoman, pushed the idea that a 2022 mass shooting was a false flag operation to take away guns from conservatives. So I think there's some basis for that <laughs> phrase there from the author. A little bit further. Currently, she's threatening to oust Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson. The piece continues. The Louisiana representative with a five-vote majority in the House is attempting to keep his caucus intact as he navigates treacherous issues, including funding Ukraine, which has become unpopular with some conservatives, and reauthorizing the controversial Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. He also struggled to pass a funding bill, which required relying on Democrats to get another sp a big spending package over the threshold. So now we get to Marjorie Taylor Greene's response. 
And uh, just last couple of things before playing it, please make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button. If you click the join button next to that, then you get the daily bonus show and you support the work being done. Plus, drop a comment if you have something to say. Even if you don't have something to say, just drop a bunch of nonsense. It would be greatly appreciated just for algorithmic purposes. And uh, here, one thing I want you to take note of while you're listening to this is we've long known that living in the MAGA bubble can sort of cause you to lose your mind, which Marjorie Taylor Greene has very much lost her mind. But also, I think specifically what we're seeing here is it can distort what you think the rest of the world wants. Sort of like when you're living and growing up in a really affluent community, people will say you live in a bubble, right? You live in this sort of distortion of reality. And if you don't properly go out to the outside world, you'll think the whole world is something that it's not. And you'll have a lack of context and understanding about the rest of the world. And here we're seeing this where Marjorie Taylor Greene has now gotten in this feedback loop where she's getting just a lot of MAGA feedback that's causing her to think the world wants something and is something that it doesn't and is not now because of your efforts and the, you know fox goes oh she's an agent of chaos she's a narcissist is all about her ego because of your action politico's reporting they're going to have a formal power sharing agreement which they've had to date but now that you smoked them out now they have to come forward because they're going to demand a pound of flesh like they've already been getting a pound of flesh now it's all in the open Congressman Green, your thoughts? That's right. It's out in the open. And you're right. You know, Fox News called me an idiot. That was literally their headline. They called me an idiot. But what I've done is expose what was already happening in the dark. And I think, I think the beautiful thing about it is, is that Democrats have to come clean. They were controlling Mike Johnson anyways. He was giving them everything, wide open border policies, fully funded, fully funded the Biden Department of Justice, fully funded the FBI, gave them a brand new building, paid for full term abortion funding, paid for the trans agenda against children. He voted down warrant requirement for FISA. Then he gives $61 billion to Ukraine. And while he's claiming that he's helping Israel, he actually stabs them in the back with $9 billion to Hamas. And then another three and a half billion dollars that Joe Biden's about to use to bring in so-called refugees from Gaza into America. And Joe Biden wants to give them a citizenship. So this has already been happening. But the beauty of it is, is that Politico is telling the truth. So I said this when we talked about her press conference where she announced that she'd be doing this. And she speaks as if the whole world is waiting just waiting for Marjorie Taylor Greene to expose the Uniparty and expose the deep state and oust Mike Johnson. When in reality, the reaction from most of the world and most of the country is, what? Huh? What is she doing? Oh gosh, that crazy person's at it again. And not, yes, she just confirmed <laughs> the Democrats and the Republicans, they're all in cahoots. <laughs> no, no one's thinking that except for her hardcore MAGA supporters, which again is this thing that sort of causes your mind to get warped when you are existing in MAGA Twitter and everyone's rooting you on thinking you're crushing it when in reality you're embarrassing yourself. And while people don't like whenever Republicans and Democrats work together on things that aren't in the American people's interest, most people see this example of Republicans and Democrats working together to prevent you throwing Congress into chaos as a rare example in modern times of bipartisanship really being <laughs> effective, right? Uh, finally, they are able to unite around the fact that we don't want Marjorie Taylor Greene getting to pick the Speaker of the House. But in her, her world, she's just fighting the good fight. It's pretty wild. And also, I do want to note, she is obsessed. I'm not going to go through the whole list she went through because we've gone through it so many times of why she wants to Alice Mike Johnson. But one of the things she brings up a lot is that the DOJ shouldn't be funded, right? She is pro defund the police when it comes to federal police like the FBI. And she wants to punish law enforcement organizations like the Department of Justice for daring to hold the dear leader accountable, Donald Trump. And that's premised on the idea that Republicans are being targeted by the DOJ and Democrats are being protected. Now, I'm not going to play this clip for you because it is too long, but I once had a conversation with a gentleman in a Mocos with MAGA episode who just kept repeating, there's a two-tier justice system. 
and uh, or dual standard of justice. And I kept trying to bring up examples of how that can't be true because Democrats have also been prosecuted, meaning this idea of the DOJ protecting Democrats, targeting Republicans, just doesn't seem to bear out in the facts. And that made itself known when we observed the indictment of uh, Democratic Senator Bob Menendez. Well, now we're getting another example of this. Democratic Representative Henry Cuellar, he has just been indicted. Here's this from Fox News reporting on it. Source saying Democratic Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar has been indicted as part of an investigation into the United States business people with foreign connections. The feds raided Cuellar's home and they raided his campaign office in 2022. And at the time, his counsel had said Cuellar was not the target of the investigation. Cuellar just released a statement saying that he and his wife are innocent. We'll keep you up to speed on what happens with this. Yeah, so of course, Henry Cuellar, like Trump and like Bob Menendez, has the presumption of innocence. I will say, like I've said about Trump's case and about Bob Menendez's case, it doesn't look great for Henry Cuellar. And the Department of Justice doesn't seem to be in the habit of prosecuting people that they can't get a conviction out of, which is why Trump should be terrified. They have like an 88 plus percent conviction rate, if I'm not mistaken. And so as I've heard of this investigation before it led to indictment, it also didn't seem great on these corruption related charges from Henry Cuero. But again, a Democrat being legally held, oh my goodness whoops, uh, legally held accountable. And it's yet another example, like Hunter Biden being indicted for the gun charge, having a gun when he was on drugs, which he wasn't supposed to, and uh, the tax evasion stuff. Maybe MAGA, the reason why Democrats are also being held legally accountable, which I support as a Democrat, can you imagine, is because the Department of Justice isn't biased against Republicans. And it does just uphold the law. And when Democrats see Democrats be prosecuted for justified reasons, we accept it. When you see Republicans get prosecuted, you can't accept it. And uh, I don't know what that says about either of our values. Maybe the law and order party, the rule of law party is not the Republican party. Here is some reporting. Let's just check in. So we got the March of the Green stuff out of the way. Let's check in on something else in MAGA world. And that is that Christy Nome of puppy killing fame, she has another story that's coming out about her that's not particularly flattering, which is that in this same book where she bragged about the killing of the dog, she also told a story about how she met Kim Jong-un. And this story seems to be fabricated. The Dakota Scout. Scout. (laughs) Sounds like a dog's name. Um, Reports on this. An upcoming book by South Dakota Governor Christy Noem that has created an uproar over her account of shooting a dog also contains at least two instances in which she recounts meetings with world leaders that are in dispute. Oh no, Christy. In No Going Back, Noam says she met North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un while serving in Congress on the House Armed Services Committee. Last year as governor, she says she canceled a meeting with French President Emmanuel Macron. But neither account has been verified by congressional travel documents or outside sources reviewed by the Dakota Scout. And the Scout confirmed with the French President's office that Macron never had a meeting scheduled with Noam. The alleged meeting with Kim Jong-un is especially irate into North Korea analysts and congressional staffers. So that was the initial reporting that raised eyebrows. Then we got more confirmations, USA Today reports. And uh, first, here's the excerpt. I remember, she writes, when I met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. I'm sure he underestimated me, having no clue about my experience staring down little tyrants. I'd been a children's pastor, after all. But Noam's spokesperson seemed to confirm to Politico and other news outlets that the story is not accurate and the book will be corrected to remove it. It was brought to our attention that the upcoming book, No Going Back, has two small errors. This has been communicated to the ghostwriter and editor. Kim Jong-un was included in the list of world leaders and shouldn't have been. And so if she's able to say that the Macron story, the Kim Jong-un story, okay, maybe maybe I didn't stare down Kim Jong-un and he peed his pants, but uh, I've met a lot of world leaders, so who really knows the difference? then couldn't she say that her ghostwriter also messed up the dog story? <laughs> that maybe would have been a better way to go about that instead of doubling down and uh, 
trying to defend herself on that one. But there it is. Not Christy Nome went from who I thought was the leading contender, South Dakota governor Trump has previously indicated he would like to pick a female running mate and she's MAGA and didn't seem to have a lot of political baggage, but very quickly she's dropped on that list and reportedly Trump said what was wrong with her or something like that in response to the dog killing story. And so a very unfortunate couple of weeks for Christy Nome politically and we'll see where it all goes. Again, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel.